Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to try to get to four questions in five minutes. So if I ask it concisely and I get somewhat a concise response, maybe I can get that done. I want to start with Mr. Bradbury there. Are you or any of your organization invested in any energy enterprises? Actually have skin in the game? No. To be able to make a financial projection of whether there is a three-year-to-one three payback and all this stuff? These are just theoretical, right? You're not putting real money into this. No, we're not okay, putting our own money. Thank you. Um, Senator Dorgan, uh, 2005, I was here too. It was one of the great energy conferences where we actually debated amendments. It was, uh, I wish we could get back to that era because it, uh, it was a great debate in, in this committee room. I did look at the executive summary. I didn't read the whole report. You do in the executive summary have a bullet point on, on transmission. And, but it's kind of, you're really referring to the transmission pipeline for transportation of either natural gas or liquid transportation fuels. Is that correct? Uh, well, or are you talking about the electricity? Uh, mostly electricity. electricity when we refer to that, but uh, you know, when you talk about transmission, you'd also want to be... I think it's something we really have to focus on because what we see going on right now, and I just read an article today about Canada and Maine, and, and the market will move a product and it'll, there's, it's dislocating other types unless we have a very good policy of incentivizing the building of more pipelines. We, we do have, we have electric transmission problems and issues of stranded energy right. because you can't transport it to the load center Correct. where you get wind or solar. Especially with the green. And we green. also have pipeline transmission issues, right. although we've built a lot of pipelines in the last 10 years, natural gas. But I, there are stories about us uh, as reverse flowing now natural gas from the place to maybe the LNG terminals and stranding uh, refined product along the path of the old stranded. I, I would hope that's something we could look at, and I'll look through your report to see. Uh, I think it's a big issue. I know of two areas where uh, retailers are, getting, are, are now being stranded by their product because of LNG movement. Let me mention to you on oil, uh, every day in the Bakken in North Dakota, they are transporting 500,000 barrels of oil a day by train. Not by pipeline, by train. Right. Burlington Northern is, has permagrin. Well, to address the greenhouse gas issue, what's a, a better ability to, if you're, if you're worried about this, I'm personally not, but uh, would be by pipeline. Not by trucks, not by train, but by pipeline. So I would, I would hope the environmental community, and we see what they're doing with Keystone XL, they're not helpful, they would understand that moving commodity products through pipeline is the most efficient safest way, uh, and actually in the greenhouse gas arena, it, it, it's tremendous savings. Mr. Halleck, um, I got an article here from a local paper, Southern Illinois paper, which is where I'm from, and I just want a quick response to these two statements I've highlighted in this article. Some envision the kind of economic boom they've heard about in other states, tens of thousands of workers drilling for oil and gas, local businesses barely keeping up with demand, and many municipal coffers flush with cash. Is that what you've observed? I would concur with that, though, while we are in much better financial uh, position. Yeah, this is poor southern Illinois. Uh, I, I represent 33 counties, and so there's, you know, we got a play coming, and so there's this whole debate, and you've lived it. The other part that says, others are spooked by stories of housing shortages, towns overrun with strangers, torn up roads, and claims of polluted water, and worry that drilling would forever alter the serenity, beauty, and very character of an area they consider special. Has that happened to your county? That's not really a concern. Uh, the technology today is, is such that uh, we actually have uh, rigs that have been on site and uh, they're gone in 30 days. So that's great. Problem. Thank you. And if our staff would put up this slide for Ms. Jaffe, I also chair the Baltic Caucus and I hope this comes up right. I have a picture here. So that's a proposed LNG terminal uh, that will go in Lithuania. Also, I think there's one being proposed for Poland. I do with Eastern European issues, democracy movements, uh, uh, been very focused, and Russia does extort their neighbors through energy. If we have the ability to export liquefied natural gas, what does that do to two things, the ability of Russia to extort their neighbors and the ability of the local Eastern European countries and allies, most of all are in NATO now, uh, they're all in the EU. What does it help with their economy? 
Well, I think it's very important. You raise an extremely important point because, number one, we don't want Russia to use the threat of a cutoff of natural gas to create a wedge between us and our allies in Europe. We want everyone in Europe to be able to uh, 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 feel a strong alliance, economic and otherwise, with the United States and not have to worry about their energy supply being curtailed by Russia. Secondarily, you can imagine uh, how positive it would be if the Russians threatened to cut off one of our allies in Europe and an American company could supply them with natural gas through an export terminal from the United States. You all did great. Thank you very much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this time I recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I said in a, a minute that our ranking member gave me, but uh, again, I want to welcome our two senators and appreciate your leadership on energy for many years. Senator Johnson, my only concern is that that the one LNG export facility is Chenier. It's on the Sabine side of Louisiana instead of on the Texas side. But the company actually is a Houston company. So uh, we've worked together across that Sabine River for many years. And Senator Dorgan, it goes without saying, some of the success in, uh, in